has the strong delusion already begun. What are you talking about? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, many of us would interpret that thing, that this is going to happen after the rapture, when the Antichrist shows up, because you read about that there in verses 7 down through 9. The thing about, you know, that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, verse 7, and verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? It's talking about the Antichrist in the passage there. And so we would say, okay, after the Antichrist is revealed, then this God's going to send him strong delusion. Well, that's true. But um, who is the strong delusion coming upon? Verse 10 says, Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Saved from what? You say, well, you know, saved eternal salvation. Well, sure, that's there. But what's the completion of your salvation? Jesus said that he is the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Back in the book of John. The completion of your salvation is the redemption of the purchased possession. You see, the rapture. When the Lord catches away the body of Christ, when he takes them up before the time of Jacob's trouble, that completes salvation for a Christian. So, what is the time period when these people, of verse 10 there, they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved? That's right now. This isn't just, well, that's going to happen after you know the rapture occurs. Uh, well, then it's going to get real bad. But the fact of the matter is, this passage, verse 10, is actually taking place right now as we're speaking. You know, I was thinking about this, and, and uh, I've been on YouTube now since December, or no, November 2008. Uh, it's a long time. We're heading, you know, definitely in my ninth year here, um, 10 years in ministry. I started in 2007 uh, in the actual ministry, but then 2008 on YouTube, and uh, so we're heading towards 10 years on YouTube. Probably aren't going to make it to 10 years with the way things are going with all their, you know, censorship stuff that they're doing now. But uh, back when I first got on YouTube, um, there were a lot of people that would disagree with me and things and whatever else. But it just seemed like people back then were more cordial in the way they would do things, or they, you know, they were. It wasn't that we agreed to disagree or anything like that, because I, you know, I'd flat out tell them you're wrong. They'd be say the same to me. And whatever, but it was a lot more. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. Gentlemanly. It was. It was more. It wasn't this just like vicious stuff. And you know, and I'll be the first to admit, I get drawn into that sometimes, and I get a little bit vicious myself. But you know, if you watch my videos, you know that I love you, even as an enemy. Um, you know that I. You know, most of what I do is very, very. You know, I try to be very meek and gentle with, with how I preach. Um, you know, sometimes I get angry and whatever, but a lot of what I do is, is done in a spirit of meekness. But, um, man, the, the enemies are just getting worse and worse and worse. And the deception is just incredible. I mean, the latest, you know, big thing here has been this, uh, this thing of me coming out with a video debunking this satanic lie that Jesus Christ was a black man. Um, and people go, well, it doesn't matter what race he was. It doesn't matter what skin color he was. Well, yes, it does. He was a Jew. And you see, he prophesied that those Jews are going to come back to the land and that they would eventually receive him as their Messiah. Um, the blacks can't fulfill that. And the whites can't fulfill that. The Jews in Israel can and will fulfill it. Okay? Uh, so yes, it does matter what Jesus' ethnicity was. And I've, I mean, I've talked about this in so many studies. I mean, my word, some of these people, oh, you yeah, can't cover it. If you want the truth, it's out there, all right? Can't help you. But more and more, it's becoming apparent that a lot of the people that are enemies of the truth, and not just, you know, here, that are people that are attacking my ministry, but a lot of you out there, you, you post a comment, whatever, and they, they'll come and they'll attack you too. You know, and you might not agree with me and everything, but it's just like, it's crazy. I mean, you know that if you stand for dispensational truth, if you stand for the rapture being before the time of Jacob's trouble, if you stand for 
you know, the King James Bible being God's perfect word, you don't need to mess with it. You stand against the Catholic Church. You stand against worldliness and, and rock music and, you know, television, movies, the whole thing. Just those few standards alone. We go off on a lot of the other ones, but just those few, you're going to get attacked hard. You know, if you stand for the the modern day nation of Israel, that they have a right to that land. I'm not saying that stand up for those Jews over there and say that they're godly people. They're not. They're wicked. That's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, talked about that before many times. But if you take these stands, you're going to get attacked hard. And what's the reason that they're attacking? They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Okay, go down to verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's the reason they don't receive the love of the truth. Because they have pleasure in that unrighteousness. They have pleasure in their sin. The easy believism heretic comes along and he says, all you got to do is believe. This repentance, this stuff, and all this attitude towards sin, and you got to change life and all. You don't need that. You know why they're saying that? Because they have pleasure in unrighteousness. They don't want to give up certain things of the world that the Bible condemns. So they just kind of skirt those things. Well, you know, you can still be saved and fill in the blank, you see. And they'll turn it into this whole thing, a work salvation or whatever. Listen, listen. When you come to God for true salvation, when you're truly coming to Him and saying, God, please save me, it's because you've messed up your life and you want His help. You, you've tried everything to get your life back on track and whatever else, and nothing works. And you come to the Lord broken, saying, God, please save me and help me to clean up this mess of my life. Somebody comes along and says, oh, you don't need to clean it up. You can just continue it. You go, what are you talking about? Are you, are you kidding me? I mean, I did that study on Jeff Dahmer, you know. Do you think that he would have wanted to be told, oh, you can just go and continue, you know, doing your thing there and stuff. And you can continue to be a sodomite and a cannibal and whatever else because it's all about, it's that salvation and it just takes your sins away and you can continue sinning then, you know. <laughs> no, he wanted help. And, you know, the dark stuff he did, you know, he, he talked about after his, you know, salvation and things he talked about. I just, I can't get this stuff out of my head. And, yeah, I bet. You do those kind of six things, it's going to stick in your head for a while. Um, it's really something. But these people that are coming out and they're attacking me, they're attacking you. If you have do any kind of videos and things, I mean, the, the attacks. I mean, you know, I can't hear you saying amen, but, you know, uh, do you see what I'm saying? The attacks have gotten so much worse. Why? Well, brethren, because we're seeing verse 10 coming to pass. We're seeing it. Now, I want you to think about an interesting thought here. Who are the ones that God is going to send the strong delusion upon? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Who are those people? Your average lost person out there that's never heard the gospel? No, these are people who have heard it. They have had access to the truth. Hmm. Interesting. And what's it tied to? Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. See, that ties up to verse 10, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, it's church people, religious people. What does the Bible say that the people in the time of Jacob's trouble are going to do to the Antichrist? They're going to uh, worship him? You mean... Uh, Religious people are going to be the ones that are taking the mark of the beast. Wouldn't it be a weird thing if the Lord flipped it? Right now, the religious people talk about Jesus Christ. The secular lost people just talk about the things of the world. But after the rapture, the religious people go on and take the mark and worship the beast and his image. And those lost people right now that are out there in the world who could care nothing at all about the Bible or, you know, religion or whatever else. Wouldn't it be something if they were the time of Jacob's trouble saints? Hmm. God sends the strong delusion, brethren, on those who had the truth available to them and they rejected it because they had pleasure in unrighteousness.
Let that sink in for a minute. Isn't that something? So these people that come and they, they just will not be admonished. They just don't care what you have to say. You give them scripture, 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 and they just keep coming back and arguing and attacking and just twisting the scriptures to everything. You're going, I don't even know what you're saying anymore. This doesn't even make any sense. I've never heard anybody say this before. This is just twisted. You know, and you just feel the hatred coming through the comments. You're dealing with those people that they're not receiving love of the truth. God's going to send them strong delusion. And they're going to go right on and they're going to worship the Antichrist because they're going to think he's Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what, I've talked to a lot of these professing Christians and you ask them who Jesus is, they will describe the Antichrist. He doesn't judge. He loves you. He loves everything. He wants us all to come together. He's not going to squabble over what Bible version you use or what kind of music you listen to. Jesus wouldn't do that. They're describing the Antichrist. What a weird thing. Lost people, time of Jacob's trouble, are going to have a chance to get saved. Professing Christians today are going to go right into that time and God Himself is going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. What a thing. One other place we'll turn to here real quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. Good verses I've gone over many times, but very, very true, very applicable to today. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. You know, again, I see this thing with this whole Jesus is a black man thing and all this stuff. I'm seeing, you know, I just kind of looked at the thing, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Oh, the, you're the Jews living in New York City or Georgia or someplace like that. Where's your holy city at? And, you know, it's just, where are the animal sacrifices? Okay, you're under the Old Testament. Where are the sacrifices? Where's your holy tabernacle? Things, you know, they're cuckoo birds, but, you know, whatever. They're about as dumb as the uh, Andersnake zombies, the replacement theology papists that are out there that think that white Europeans are the Jews now or something. But, you know, and I've seen some of these, these people, these racists, you know, and they come out and they say, all people were once black. White people were seeded here by aliens. I mean, that's actually a theory that they have. And all the noble families of the past were, were black, including King James. <laughs> like, okay, uh, shall be turned unto fables. Yeah, I think that would be about right. But I have another interesting little theory. We're not going to go there. You can check it out. Uh, we've talked about the Revelation studies, but Revelations chapter 2 and 3, those two chapters there, um, both of those discuss about seven churches. And there are seven angels associated with those churches. And of course, that doesn't mean some church building someplace and an angel sits on top of it or something. No. It means that there's a group of people. When you have a group of people, a called out assembly would be another way to say it, they come together, called out of the world, and they assemble together. That's a church in the New Testament. Churches are never buildings. And there's an angel, basically, that watches over that church. What if it works in the reverse? Huh? What if all of these heresies have a devil of some kind that has the people deceived? Because, you know, I'll be quite frank with you. I've seen people that get a little bit messed up. They'll say, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll come out with something that's a little bit off in the scriptures and you can lovingly come to them and say, well, let me just show you what the, why that would be a problem, what you're saying here. And you show them scripture, compare scripture to scripture and they go, oh man, yeah, I, I do see what you're saying. Oh, you know, thank you for loving, lovingly correcting me. That's there. But when you see these people and they come up with these elaborate systems that are just so packed with lies and just disinformation and they're, they're just 
ripping the scripture to shreds. That's not just the flesh that's doing that. There's a spirit involved in some of this stuff. I mean, you watch some of these false prophets. I don't recommend doing a whole lot of it, but if you ever do and you see a false prophet and you come away at, after listening to him for a couple of minutes and you're going, I don't even, what in the world? And you come away confused. The Bible says God's not the author of confusion. And I'll tell you right now, some of these people, just a regular man, a lost man, cannot twist the scriptures to that level. And my theory, my theory is that a lot of these false movements that are out there, the, the replacement theology, the Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelite thing, the, the white British Israelism, um, some of this other stuff, you know, uh, non-dispensational things and, and the whole post-trib system, a lot of that stuff. I'm going to, again, make a big list of all these things. I think that there's a devil. Just as the church, there are seven churches, seven angels watching over those churches, and there's you know, probably more. It's just seven listed in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. But you know, there could be other angels there that are protecting and things. Uh, so I'm not just limiting it to seven. I don't really know uh, today in this day and age what, what there are. But I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird because I'm, like, I'm looking at them saying some of these people... I mean, how is it that they're all deceived by these obviously just blatant false teachings? I believe that there's a spirit involved. You know? Just a theory on my part there. But what should you do? Verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Um... Had a little memory come back to me as I was going over this, these thoughts in my mind. I, I didn't even write any notes for this. It's just like something the Lord's been putting in my mind, and I thought, you know, I need to make a video just to exhort the brethren. Um, I remember back when I used to work at the Strasburg Railroad. It was a steam engine, you know, old uh, 1800s, early 1900s, big steam locomotive. And, and uh, I remember uh, it was my job to run down to the station or down to the restaurant and get supplies for the train because I was a cook on the train. And uh, so I had like 15 minutes. It'd pull in about quarter of, you know, whatever hour, and it left on the hour, exactly on the hour. And I remember there'd be times I'd run down to the restaurant and I'd be getting things and stuff, and I'd start hearing the bell ring. Ding, 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 ding. And I'd be like, I'd look at my watch. Oh man, I got like three minutes to go. And I'd grab the supplies, and there were times I literally had to run through the big crowds of people to get back to that train. And there were times people didn't even make it back to the train, you know, time would run out or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I'd get to that train, and uh, there'd be a conductor, and it was part of the job that they'd have, and they'd say, all aboard! And you'd see all the employees of the train, the conductor and the different people and stuff working. And they'd be there. You'd see the engineer up front and he'd be getting, you know, checking things, you know, the valves and things on the steam engine. And he'd get up and he'd see climb him, climbing up into the train. And the conductor would get up onto the ladder going up, you know, the steps going up in. And, and they'd look. Everybody with a ticket. You better get on the train. And you'd hop on the train and about that time you'd hear the... The steam coming out that powers the, the wheels and the, the, you know, if you've never seen a steam engine, look it up, you know. It starts going like this and, and you see the smoke start to puff out the top. As that train starts to slowly pull out. And every once in a while, somebody running, hold on, and they jump up onto the train, you know, quick, up onto the steps. Get up in, get it in their seat. Everybody be getting into their seats and things, getting ready to leave. About that time, that train starts and the speed starts to pick up and as he's leaving the station pull down that whistle you know it's kind of like that right now I really honestly believe that we're uh, the final call is happening and we all have flesh and our flesh wants to fight sometimes because we see the wrongs that these false cults are coming out with these fables that they come out with and they're so stupid and so ridiculous and you're just like you d we all have to fight it and i'm preaching to myself right now too 
we all have to fight that temptation to get pulled away by that nonsense. If they have not received the love of the truth, God is sending them strong delusion. They're going to get right in that time and be damned. Brethren, there's not much time left. The train is leaving. All aboard, you know. Do the work of an evangelist. You know, I'm very, very much in favor of tracting. I think that there's, you know, I think it's a great method. Just get tracks out there. Um, if you run into these people, these non-dispensational, post-trib, uh, replacement theology, whatever else that we run into nowadays, and they start to argue with you, okay, well, see you, goodbye. Go to the next one. It's almost time. <laughs> there is salt there. Almost time. Time's almost up. Understand that you're not going to turn a lot of these people. They're already falling into that condemnation of the Lord. I mean, think about it. If they really truly wanted salvation, if they really truly wanted the truth, do you think God would hide it from them? Mm -mm. God sent them strong delusion because they rejected the truth. They had access to the truth. They've watched your videos. They've watched my videos. They've heard your witness. They've heard my witness. And they reject. I don't, you're, you're crazy. I don't want to hear. Okay. Goodbye. The train's starting to leave the station. I got to get aboard. I'm going to be leaving you soon. I know a lot of people don't take this stuff seriously. They just watch it as, it's, you know, just kind of entertainment, you know. Oh, those just Christians. It's just so nutty and everything else. This book is being fulfilled right before your very eyes. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, perilous times, pestilence, famine, all the different stuff. Everything coming to pass. Satellite television, as is prophesied. Implantable microchips. Cashless society. It's all coming to pass. But you're just going to wait. You're going to wait to get that ticket and to get on the train. I'm just not quite ready yet. It's going to leave the station and you're going to be left behind. And let me tell you something. It's very dangerous for any of you that are out there that are not Christians, Bible-believing Christians, not church-going Catholics. I'm not talking about that. If you are watching these videos or other videos like this from other Bible-believing Christians and you reject you're going to fall into that condemnation of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. You're already there, you see? But then verse 11 comes along where God sends you strong delusion, and He purposefully will damn you to hell. It's a dangerous thing to reject Jesus Christ. No, it's okay, I'll work it out myself. It's dangerous. Well, I just don't, I'm not ready yet and everything. It's dangerous. What's coming to this earth is going to be a nightmare. The worst time period ever in the recorded history is coming soon, very soon. And there's only one way out. Only one way. That's to get on that train. Jesus Christ, He died for your sins. For your sins. Do your sins bother you? Or do you think that you're a good person? You're not that bad. Your sins bother you? You know you've messed up? You'd be afraid to stand before God and have to give an account of your sins? Then you can get saved. You better do it quick. Time's almost up.